Hi everyone, it's Yoni from Stand With Us, and in honor of Jerusalem Day, I'm coming to you from Ammunition Hill, site of one of the bravest battles in all of IDF history. With the outbreak of the Six Day War in 1967, specifically the fighting here in Jerusalem, it was determined that Ammunition Hill was the critical linchpin to control in order to connect the Israeli enclave of Mount Scopus, which was located in Jordanian controlled East Jerusalem, to Israeli controlled West Jerusalem. The paratroopers arriving at Mount Scopus found themselves faced with a daunting task difficult terrain, pitch black conditions, a lack of military intelligence and they were soon to find out that even though they planned to attack with what they thought was three times the amount of soldiers that they needed, about 100 Israeli soldiers, they were facing near equal amount of Jordanian soldiers, putting the attacking Israelis at a serious disadvantage. To make matters worse, with the dark conditions and the bullets flying overhead, the Israeli commander who was supposed to take this western trench made a small navigational error and ended up taking the wrong trench. The western trench was left exposed, setting the stage for the bravery of the Battle of Ammunition Hill. Come with me through the trench. Let's understand what happened here. The Israeli soldiers who arrive here, the paratroopers, have literally an uphill battle, fighting through a heavily fortified area, fortified over 19 years by the Jordanians who were controlling this area. And as you can see, inside the trenches, there's very little room. They basically have to walk single file line. Whoever is first in that line is going to be exposed to fire without any of his comrades to offer cover fire. If that person falls, they need to be climbed over, somehow replaced. Every 100 yards or so, one of these bunkers sits with Jordanian soldiers inside, waiting for the Israeli soldiers to turn the corner so that they can ambush them and attack them. And what's going on outside of the trenches is not any better with Jordanian fire coming to them from the heart of Ammunition Hill. The trenches were bad, outside was even worse. Guys, we're inside a Jordanian bunker right now. Like I said, every 100 or so meters, you turn the corner and you run into one of these bunkers. Now, inside the bunker, you have, you know, somewhere between three to five, and even as we're gonna discover m much more, eight and beyond Jordanian soldiers just waiting here. Look, it's reinforced. They have the advantage here where they're protected, and they have these little windows all around. The one you can see, over here where they just kind of you know they stay sit here and they wait they don't have to do too much they just have to look through the window and wait for someone to come or wait in the corner over here and when the israeli soldiers are making their way through the trenches they don't know what's coming and all of a sudden as they turn the corner the jordanians open up with fire with heavy heavy firepower, meaning that each one of these bunkers, at each of these turns and strategic locations, each one of these bunkers needs to be cleaned out one by one by the Israeli soldiers. Entering into the trenches, the Israeli soldiers find themselves very limited space to maneuver. The first person, generally the commander who's walking here within the trenches, is going to be the first person hit by the Jordanian snipers or by Jordanian fire coming from the bunkers that are scattered here in the trenches about every 100 meters, every 100 yards or so. They can't move, they can't put more than one person at a time. They can't turn around without creating a traffic jam. And they're taking fire both from the grass, from the grassy area behind us, and from within the trenches, from within the bunker right over there. The soldiers who were able to make it through the first part of the trenches then found themselves with an even more daunting challenge. As they go further and further up Ammunition Hill, they find themselves not only going through more difficult terrain, but also with the walls rising and rising and rising. They can no longer look outside of the trenches and clearly see what's going on, and they find themselves with a very, very dangerous blind spot.
Having made it uphill, the paratroopers find themselves with the trenches closing in on them. And while it might seem secure and safe, the reality is they can't see what's going on outside and they're vulnerable. As they walk, Jordanian legionnaire lobs a grenade into the trench. The grenade goes off, and by a miracle, not a single paratrooper was injured. But knowing that he can't rely on miracles, Deputy Company Commander Nir Nirzan realizes that he needs somebody on the outside to give him cover fire. He has no time to ask for a volunteer for this suicide mission. He turns around and sees behind him 21-year-old Eitan Neve, a strapping machine gunner who he gives the order to. He turns to Eitan and he says, Eitan, go out of the trench and cover for us. Even though it was a suicide mission, Eitan lo hisses lerega. Eitan didn't hesitate for a moment. He jumped out and for a little more than 10 meters gave cover fire for his brothers in arms located here in the trench. Having been hit multiple times by Jordanian soldiers, by Jordanian bullets, Eitan fears that he can no longer continue. He turns to return to the trench and is hit in the head. He falls into the trench and dies on the spot. For his bravery, for his understanding that no one's blood is redder than anyone else's, that it's all for one and one for all. Eitan was awarded Ituragvura, the Medal of Honor, the highest medal of honor given in the IDF. Eitan at his young age understood something. He understood what it means to be a brother. He understood what it means to be all for one and one for all. There's a lot of stories like that here on Ammunition Hill. Eitan's is probably the most famous and the one that you have to tell because just think about what that was. And by the way, there was another soldier who got up after Eitan and picked up his spot to help clear the way. That's how they were fighting here at Ammunition Hill. When his mother is asked, what's the most incredible thing that you read on this honor giving, given to Eitan? She pointed to this word over here, Turai, private Eitan Neveh. Because here at Ammunition Hill, the most incredible thing was that it wasn't some high-ranking generals making incredible displays of bravery and, and, and incredible decisions. It was the bravery of the simple soldiers and their ability to take command after their commanders had been injured and killed. That is what set up and allowed them to be victorious here at Ammunition Hill. With the sun rising and the battle nearing its end, the Great Bunker becomes the final stronghold of the Jordanian legionnaires. Though it was thought to have been previously cleared out by the heroic actions of the Israeli soldiers, Yaakov Chaimovich, Yehuda Kandov, and David Shalom, when those three soldiers come back here to search for ammunition and grenades, they discover that there were still Jordanian soldiers within the bunker. They try to blow the bunker up with a bazooka, the bazooka barely makes a scratch. The tank cannot bring its turret in to blow it up. Eventually, in an incredible act of teamwork, 16 kilograms of explosives are thrown from one end of the bunker to the other and placed bravely at the entrance of the bunker in between shots and grenades being thrown. The explosives are set off. The great bunker falls and so ends the battle for Ammunition Hill. At the conclusion of the battle for Ammunition Hill, 36 Israeli soldiers had been killed in action. And before the rest of their brothers in arms could continue on with the task of reuniting Jerusalem, they built them a temporary memorial in honor and in memory of their fallen comrades. But that wasn't enough for the Israeli soldiers. And before they left Ammunition Hill, they buried 17 of the Jordanian soldiers who had been killed here in action and placed a sign over the grave saying, here lie 17 brave Jordanian soldiers. The battle for Ammunition Hill was a hard fought battle on both sides and recognized by both Israeli and Jordanian soldiers as an incredibly brave battle. 
When summarizing the battle on Ammunition Hill, then Defense Minister Moshe Dayan put it as follows. The battle for Ammunition Hill was one of the hardest fought battles against the Jordanians. But it wasn't the difficulty of the battle, nor was it the immense toll, the incredible amount of casualties that we paid in order to conquer Ammunition Hill that makes it an unforgettable battle. Rather, it was the personal bravery of each one of those Israeli soldiers that makes this battle one of the most historic battles in the history of the IDF. From here, the paratroopers would go on to link up Mount Scopus with the rest of Israeli-controlled Jerusalem. And sitting on the Mount Scopus Ridge, the soldiers would receive the order to make their way to the old city and reunite the entire Jewish people with their eternal capital. It's the bravery of the soldiers who fought here on Ammunition Hill and in sites throughout Jerusalem that we're able to celebrate Jerusalem today.